All right. Uh, I think we are live. Good morning, uh, whoever is watching, to the beautiful people of wherever you are. Um, this is Strength Club. It's a weekly kind of podcast, the video chat thing, um, where we talk about common or popular items within the starting strength world and just kind of lifting in general. And we try to flesh them out a little bit more. Um, but I'm here with my boy, Chase Lindley. How's it going, Chase? Doing good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing okay, man. It's been in the past, like, five, I've passed three days. I've been driving probably six hours a day we're just road tripping the hell around right now we're road tripping the hell around i brought the station wagon up the xc70 it's it's called the cross country so i guess it's appropriate we're doing kind of a a national lampoons vacation style thing oh yeah yeah we're having a good time um what's our topic for this time chase what are we gonna talk about so we got coaching yourself and some form checks but the main kind of talk here is just um it's coaching yourself right a lot of people kind of stumble into the gym and yeah, they may have a program that they've, you know, seen on YouTube or they talk to someone, but day by day, that process of you getting better relies a lot of on your technique here. Yeah. I think that's one thing that people don't realize. It's like, you have to be incredibly pensive about lifting. Um, you know, one of the rip quotes, it's like people, you know, normally have no idea what's going on with their spine at any given time. You know, mm-hmm. even you can ask someone who has been like an occasional gym rat going to the gym two times a week, f- two to four times a week for a year before they do actual programming. And be like, all right, how's your back extension on your squat? They'll be like, what? I have no idea. I just kind of sit down and stand up. They'll be he'll yep. done an activity for a very extended period of time, but to put zero thought into it. Um, that is this weird lifting purgatory where you kind of get stuck in. So you have to be actively thinking about what you're doing, you know? So when you do a set of squats, you should be thinking about it beforehand, thinking about what you're doing during it. And then afterwards, you should be thinking about how that goes, you know? Um, once you feel like you have skill mastery over it, you know, like Chase, I'm sure post set, you're just kind of thinking about bar speed, thinking about how hard it felt, and that's really it, you know? Um, now that you're doing the technical lifts, like the snatch and the power clean, which means the snatch and the clean, you have to do a lot more thinking, right? Oh, yeah. Like, um, it's so funny. I'm having a hard time with the clean and or the, the snatch rather. And I have, you know, a bunch of people looking at it, kind of shooting off ideas or, you know, kind of some form corrections. And while I'm doing the lift itself, I go blank. Whereas like with the squat, I know like every aspect of my body. I know like, yeah. I know how my knees feel. I know how my low you back You can paint feels. a picture of what's exactly. going on. Yeah. Like I can literally do it in my sleep and just kind of like be blindfolded. I can be mute, deaf, all this stuff. And I just have an inner workings of the squat inside my mind. It's It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And, and like it, that transfers to a lot of sports, you know, like especially with like grappling or anything like that. That's mm-hmm. kind of my, my, my native sport. Um, but like during it, when you're new, you can't think of anything but like keeping your head above water. And it's, yeah. the whole, it's a panic attack, you know, the entire two hour practice. But once you get good at it, there's all these tiny things that you can think of because you're, you're staying calm. Um, but we'll go through some of the housekeeping stuff and then dig more into this. Um, these are all of our contact information. Uh, Chase's Instagram account, out Chase Lindley, and then Chase underscore Lindley, his backup account. Um, give those both a follow. Uh, Chase does online coaching, so reach out to him for that stuff. Um, my website is acostrength.com. Um, I'm full up on online coaching right now, but if you want to do like a quick consult or something like that, shoot me a message more than happy. I really like interesting technical problems. So if you think you're some sort of weirdy and you need some help, please let me know. Um, and then Mick is at support at Strength Club. Uh, if you're a longtime follower, you'll know Mick. Uh, he doesn't pop around too, too often now. Um, and if you want to get videos on the show, because we do form checks almost every week, um, that's going to be support at strength.club um, and also through the Starting Strength app. So most of our uh, base here is from the SS app. So you can just submit videos through there too. Okay, so the topics of what we're going to be touching on today let's see, is all this on the screen? Perfect. Um, is what you're doing working? That's the first thing, you know, kind of analyzing. Um, Am I being effective in the gym? Am I getting what I want? Uh, interesting stories about that. Um, then we're going to go through uh, separating technical issues versus programming issues. Um, this one we can go on for a good bit, and I'm sure there's going to be some disagreement on this one. Uh, the third one, um, I'm not sure how Chase feels about this one uh, in terms of like how much this actually matters. I think this matters a ton. Um, but identifying trends and personality issues uh, for yourself. You know, like what is your personality and what proclivities does that lend itself to in the gym? Um, it, it impacts what career you choose, what clothes you wear. It's also going to impact what you're doing with your health and fitness. Um, how to start troubleshooting and kind of moving towards solution. This will kind of be the video portion where we're breaking down videos. Um, and then we'll wrap it up with just kind of like some information or like how to kind of suss out if you were reading good information or, you know, you found a quality resource. Um, Chase, which one of these do you think you're going to like the most? Which one do you think you're going to hate the most? Mm, really, I'm, I kind of go through all this stuff on a day-to-day basis, but more so 
in my own mind. Um, I'm really not talking about it or explaining it into great detail. Mm -hmm. I kind of do with some apprentices, um, but this is still kind of more um, inclusive to just myself, but really any of these, um, I like talking about this. Okay. All right, cool. We'll just hammer out the first one. Um, so is what you're doing working? You know, it's kind of defining what your goals are. Like there are plenty of people who will be doing the first two months of starting strength and then they'll give up because they'll be like, oh, I'm just not seeing the results I want. They will have put five to 10 pounds on every lift each time they come in reliably because they're, they're doing their homework, but they won't, you know, look like Arnold Schwarzenegger at the end of it. They won't have lost the requisite fat. They won't really kind of line their goals up with reality. And then like, ah, it just wasn't for me. That happens all the time. Um, so if what you're is doing, if what you're doing is working and you have good reason to believe that it will give you or put you closer towards your goal, keep doing it. Um, Chase, do you ever see that happen often where people just kind of bail because it's not going fast enough? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, this, in, this kind of goes into the fact of uh, the difference between training and exercising, right? And if you can't differentiate the two, um, it's going to be real difficult trying to make any sort of progress. Um, the vast majority of people out there, they'll go to a barbell, they'll do a few sets, and they don't really have an idea of how to kind of progress that, whether it's through technique or programming, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But just the concept of going up each time, it's it's flabbergastism. And um, I get this a lot with clients coming in. Is you know, It's hard to believe that you know they started off with either just squatting to the bar you know, with like a goblet squat to now – three months, they have 135 in the, on their back and they're squatting. Um, it, yeah, a lot of people just kind of confuse the two and they don't differentiate it. Yeah, like rates of rates of progress and kind of like that sens sensation within the workout, you know. Um, I made a big mistake with a, with a newer client of mine, I guess big, depending on who you ask. Um, but she was like super pumped to add another exercise. And I was like, okay, we can just add something else at the end just kind of for fun. Um, we did like some box step ups and it flared some plantar fasciitis that she had in the bottom of her foot, you know, just from basically it's just like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, big girl, a little bit of weight like holding something and then going up and down like an extra, you know, 15, 30 times. It was a lot to aggravate the foot um, where it's just like that it's going to touch onto the personality thing we have later, but it's like what we were doing was working. Do we have any real reason to change something outside of like fun, for example, sometimes that's a really good reason to change things. Um, but if what you're doing is working really reconsider or really take some time to consider if you should be adding something or if you should be taking mm -hmm. something out, you know, um, like likewise with that, you know, I've had some clients, like some other female clients who are like, they're well on their way to pull when 175 to 185 within their first year of training. That's great. You know, it's great for most women. Um, and then still, it didn't necessarily seem like it was fast enough, you know, where it's like for guys, for example, a lot of times they'll be like, do you think I'll ever be able to squat four or five in my lifetime? And you're like, yeah, yeah man, you're 30. What you got? Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to die when you're 36. Trust me, you got time. Um, so kind of like having someone who you can uh, cons uh, consult with and say, are my goals reasonable? You know, is are my mm -hmm. pacing and expectations reasonable? That can really help you determine what you're doing is working because it's like, Technically, if you gain 10 pounds on your bench press a year, it's still positive progress on your bench press, you know, oh, yeah. but if your bench press is 135 pounds and at, you go, you got to 145 across the year, that may not be working, you know? Um, but if Chase is taking his bench press from like 425 to 435 in a year, that's a great year, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of really depends. Like that question has a lot of depth to it. That's like how advanced you are. And it's like kind of what your expectations are. Are you gaining late, losing weight? Are you kind of in technical refinement? Um, Chase, like whenever you're planning out your longer blocks of training, let's say you're planning out the first, like just planning out 2022, what are you looking for? Um, just goals, right? Um, I kind of have these numbers in my head to where, you know, it's not egregious. It's not like I'm trying to add like 120 kilograms on my clean and jerk. Cause that's kind of, it's not a good sound goal, right? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to run myself into the ground real quick, but it's numbers that I know that are attainable. Um, you know, it's kind of that stair step of adding cues along the or the goals along the way towards like maybe mm -hmm. um i had 10 kg within two months right and then in the span of six months i've added you know 40 kgs to my lift and that's very very um helpful for me and you know some other things too where i know that you know maybe i can now progress like a set of five instead of um totally working on a true one rep max because i yeah. know it takes a lot more effort Increasing the total weight amount on the bar in my case for being an advanced athlete that I may have to now, you know, make week or, you know, monthly PRs with uh, reps and sets. 
Mm -hmm. And like one thing that I'll, I'll, you know, try to contextualize a lot of times for people, it's just like, okay, so, you know, the last time we did like a taper and it's your first eight months of lifting, you wanted to figure out your one RMs, you pulled, let's say 425. It was your, you know, it was a big deal for you. And eventually, you know, let's say six months later, you just hit that on a standard run of the mill day without a taper in the course of training, you know, that may still be a one rep and still still be a one rep, but like the way that you set it up was completely different. So like one thing that Chase was saying, like it's hitting something for five reps across just normal training is totally different than a prepared single, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but we've, we talked about this one. Uh, let's move to the next one. We have separating technique versus programming issues. Um, let's go to here. Uh, Chase, before, I mean, you can tackle these ones on the, on the slide if you want to. Um, but what is kind of your go-to if you think something is technique or programming? How do you start to differentiate those? A lot of the time, if it's technique, um, a person will feel it right then and right there. It's very acute, uh, the sensation, right? It's either mm -hmm. pain or um, a lot of discomfort right then, right there. Um, and then it's really relievable, um, depending on, you know, th how the pain is kind of perceived. If it's like a deep, solid ache or like a sciatic stuff, it's going to go away you know, after months. But if it's like, oh, I'm kind of feeling some impingement or, um, you know, my shoulder kind of feels wonky, well, we can adjust it with grip and now we've talked about it on a different podcast, but um, those things are easily fixable within a session. Um, instead of we're programming, it may be, you know, multiple sessions, weeks, months, whatever we need to do. Yeah, yeah. Programming, like the, the changes with programming may take a, a significant period of time depending on what you've been doing, you know. Because if you've been like grinding yourself to dust, you know, just doing like the hardest reps of your life for two months, and then you've worked it to a point where you're doing like four sets of workout because they're just so intense, um, the programming changes you're going to need to make to get some momentum rolling again, it's going to take an amount of time, you know. Um, but like for for the technique issues, um, pain and discomfort, it's always a kind of an immediate one because it's, pr it's a pretty good indicator you're doing something you're not used to, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so like if you're used to keeping good back extension, and then for some reason, you just decide to not care about it on a weight that's really heavy for you, you know, then hey, guess what, um, it probably won't feel that great. Yeah. Um, just as much it's like, my grip was two inches wider on the press and I'm using my working weight that I'm doing on my normal grip and I'm not shrugging at the top. My shoulders feel like crap. Guess what? It's probably a technique issue, you know, yep. um, you know, do what you know. Um, but the, one of the ways that I always like to say, it's like, if a lift feels hard or awkward, always like you'll tell people it's like you in the initial consults, you're like, Hey, you know, you're squatting frequently. What are you doing with that? And they're like, ah, I don't really squat. It just doesn't feel right. You know, that's one thing people say all the time. A movement doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. Um, more often than not, that's like a technique thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, that someone who has like the bar basically inside of the, their neck, you know, almost touching their ears. They're holding it really weird. Um, they're doing a quarter squat. Knees are tracking super far forward. They're not leaning over at all. And they're like, yeah, squats feel like crap. And it's like, I bet they do. You know, I'm, I'm not surprised about that at all. Um, so when something's a technique issue, you'll generally see a wall much earlier. Like I've run into some people who have like a, they'll pull 365. Their squat will be 175 because they just can't figure it out. Things like that. It's probably a technique issue. Mm -hmm. um, if a lift normally feels fine, but the progress has stalled, it's probably a programming issue. Chase, do you agree with that? Oh, definitely. And you see this okay. a lot with people's deadlifts. Um, it's kind of one of the first that kind of in my field, that I see stall one of the quickest, right? Because again, we can, we always slap a bunch of weight on people. Mm -hmm. um, they, it usually everyone can handle a bunch of 10 pound increments as they yeah. come in and then it gradually goes down to five. Um, but then, you know, they'll pull, let's say 225, a set of five on Monday, Wednesday, it's like, I can only get one rep or two. And mm -hmm. you know, we ask them, did you eat, sleep, all the recovery issues, they've handled it perfectly. It's just the weight now is becoming too taxing and we need to kind of stall out or rather string out um the the lifts a little bit toward they're recovering enough after each set yeah so like monday you know our imaginary lifter pulls 225 they weigh mm -hmm. let's say 155 right they're doing their job they're eating their wheaties they try to come in deadlift 235 on wednesday it doesn't move for one rep you know um 235 and 225 aren't so different that there's a four there's a four rep difference you know like it's not they didn't go from 225 to 275 then that that five rep to one rep ratio would make sense mm -hmm. um if the reps just fall off that dramatically that quickly um it's certainly like a recovery issue that person's probably in a little bit of a fatigue hole and they're just not strong 
strong enough to lift the weight on that day. So it's just not going to work. Um, that's when we have our programming interventions. Um, the thing that I always like to ask people, or at least I'm attempting to suss out, like whenever we're kind of going through this process, like does the lift feel really consistent, like physically in your brain? Does, does like rep one to rep five, they feel pretty similar in what you're doing. And then Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, they feel pretty similar if you're squatting every three days. Um, is it repeatable? It kind of goes back to that too. Do you feel like if you took a video of your squat on Monday and a video of your squat on Friday, it would look like the same person squatting, you know? Um, and then is it definable? We talked about this quite some time ago with kind of the, we went over the criteria. Um, what video do you think that was in Chase? I'm not sure. Exercise selection? Criteria? Uh, probably. Yeah, it was actually, I think that was in starting strength for strong lifts, actually. We may have went through the exercise yeah, criteria like really rigidly. Um, but is it definable? You know, it's so like we say with the squat, like the squat, it's like the crease in the hip, basically the head of the femur going right below the top of the knee. And then that's kind of our area for depth. That's what everyone's area for depth is. It's just like we say the deadlift that starts on the floor without bouncing, and then it reaches lockout. Like the bench press, the bar touches the chest, the elbows lock out at the top, things like that. Because um, if you're doing something different every time, it's just not really going to work. You know? Yeah, you have um, to adhere to the model as best you can. Mm -hmm. um, and these are kind of the three little pillars that we kind of see that kind of help us, you know, determine if it does in fact look like the model. Um, yeah. and this is kind of, I was just thinking as you were talking, Alex, like you, you can really see, um, these three points just fall apart with a new lifter. Um, because, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. especially for, um, a kid where <laughs> nothing's consistent, nothing's repeatable. It, they can yeah. do literally a low bar squat, be perfect one rep. And then, they do like yeah, a front rep squat, two, totally yeah, it's like something you've never even uttered before to the person. And it's, yeah, it's very astonishing what, what can happen for a mm -hmm. new time lifter. Yeah. They just kind of look like kids trying to walk, you know, they yeah. may have like two good steps and you're very hopeful and then it just completely falls apart. We're not entirely <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So that's, I've heard some people kind of define novice versus intermediate lifters saying it's just like you make a different mistake every rep versus you make the same mistake, mm -hmm. you know? Um, cause it's like, I know, for example, with my press, a lot of times I'll like stay a little bit laid back with my head and have the tendency to try to look at the bar. You know, that's one of the errors that I have personally with my press. So I really have to focus on my head position. Cause it's like, I know that's a very specific error that just me, I'm the only one making that in the gym at that exact time, you know, um, where it's like, if I was an obvious lifter, it may be hip timing, maybe wrist position. It may be the head. It may be unlocking my knees, all those things at the same time. Um, that's why it's just like the, the, the amount of coaching that I have to do with a really good lifter, zero. You know, I yeah, have to do a programming. little bit, exactly. I have to do a little bit of instruction and kind of help guide them to different mental points about execution across weeks where it's like coaching a novice, for example, you got 85 different things going on. Yeah. Um, so if you feel like your lifts are meeting these three criteria, they're definable, like you could write down in a technical piece of writing as to what's going on on the video. You know, it's great. If it's repeatable, you can do that, can do that consistently on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's great. It's probably not super technique folks to that point. Um, I wouldn't say that it would be 100% of the reason for the stall. Then it's probably programming at that point. Um, let's go to the next one. Uh, these guys, the straw men who we all love to talk about do this so we can see that bottom one. Um, are you one of these chase? I am when it comes to chin-ups, man. I, I hate doing chin-ups. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just lazy with like chins. Yeah. Um, but really anything else? No, man. I mean, kind of the benefit of growing up in Wichita Falls is just like, I've been told what to do. Like, it, you know, I never really had anything else to kind of judge it you off of. Good which, resources. Uh, I'm yeah. glad. Yeah. Like, and you know, I had some really good guys too, who, or coaching me and I saw what I could look like. Right. So I always had that goal in the physical mm -hmm. form, um, always there. So I didn't really have to worry about all this stuff being one of these guys. Yeah. So basically, you know, I, I think personality really impacts your lifting career a mm -hmm. ton, you know, like someone who is incredibly worried about body fat, they're probably going to end up moving to something that's going to burn a ton of calories in a, in a community that kind of, uh, endorses or facilitates low body fat. So they may end up in the running crowd. They may end up in the cycling mm -hmm. crowd, you know, and they're like, Oh great. I can burn 2000 calories on my two and a half hour jog. Killed it. You know? And you're like, that's, that's great. It fits your personality. Totally fine. Um, where, you know, like someone who's like, Oh, I'm going to go to war with the weights. They're putting some face paint on, they got their death metal music on. They're probably going to be the guy who always does an extra few sets or adds in a top single just out of the blue and ruins his programming. Cause he's just constantly pushing to 10 out of 10, all gas, no brakes, 365. Um, 
you know so it's like i've picked these as kind of like the five relatively or at least in my experience top personality items that i'll see um, that really hamper people's progress and um, so you have to do some honest self-accounting to say you know if what i'm doing isn't working is it for one of these reasons because it kind of probably is you know mm -hmm. um rips article the first three questions uh i've i've sent that to people who have been lifting for seven years you know yeah. i send that to athletes who are competing at the national level in their sport like it's you know, it, it happens to all of us. It happens to me. I'm sure Chase has had to answer some of those questions. I'm like, you know what, actually, I think I was just a little bored and only resting three and a half minutes for my squats. Um, yeah. Chase, if you're not familiar, or for the people who aren't familiar with that, what's going on with that three questions article? Uh, one of them is, are you eating enough? Eating uh, enough. Sleeping enough? Sleeping. Right. And then what is the jump slash rest times that you're taking in between sets, right? I think eating um, and sleeping are combined, right? Yeah, recovery. Recovery, um, so and then, recovery rest times. What is oh recovery expectations? So the weight increases, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. then rest times that. is the third. Yeah, so Does sound familiar? I guess yeah, you can lump in sleeping, sleeping and eating together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and a lot of people will just kind of blow through that, right? Yeah, um, especially you know younger people, they'll just you know not eat anything <laughs> and then come into the gym expect them to push, um, you know numbers that require them at least to have a certain threshold coming in right yeah you know, a certain caloric number coming in uh it's it's crazy and then um i think later on um this is where this gets more important is the the weights or um weight selection. Of a jump. yeah exactly yeah. weight selection and just recovery time in between sets making sure you're not rushing them because i also have people trying to finish you know, like they're five by fives all in three minutes. It's like, no, man, you got to take whatever time you need to mm -hmm. um, at that point, right? Like you've done this long enough to where you have that internal timer telling you, okay, you've, you've rested enough, right? And if you're not, hell, we made a podcast like a couple of weeks ago telling about recovery time and, and what we need to do to kind of limit some time if you need to. Yeah, how to save time. What was that two? Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you can answer the first three questions adequately, you feel like you're recovering from all of your sessions in a good timeline. Um, you are resting on in, in between sets, so you're not just like, oh man, you know, I only have 60 minutes to get 15 working sets in or whatever you're doing for the day. Um, and then you're taking appropriate weight jumps. The third one, you know, has a lot of nuance to it. It is, yeah. are your expectations matching your adaptations? Are you expecting to get five pounds stronger three times a week, but you're only getting stronger five pounds, let's say one time a week? You need to adjust your expectations, right? Because you can't incredibly dramatically change your rate of adaptation. It just slows down over time. Um, but we'll, we'll get into these guys. So the, the I'm going to work on technique. Steph just did a good article on this one. Did you read that one, Chase? Did you see that pop up? Yeah, yeah. I love that one. I sent that to the 30 people that day. I was like, this is you. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Do your work. Um, yep. Yeah. So the I'm going to work on technique guy is the people who get really worried about what they're doing, but a little bit too much. They think that their lifts have to be 100% clean 100% of the time, else their spine's going to explode or they're going to be kicked out by the gym police or their wife's going to leave them or something like that. Um, you know, it's totally fine. We're looking for B plus and just being super consistent and trying as hard as you can, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of times people will be like, Oh man, uh, you know, the squats are getting hard. I'm getting up to two, 265 on my squats and then they'll get super in their head about it. And they're like, you know what? I need to take 45 pounds off 90 pounds off. I need to work on technique cause I have this technique issue, you know? Um, mm -hmm. whereas in reality, what they need to be doing is, is, you know, doing their squats. Do you see this super often? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. a lot of it is just, you know, you've kind of run into that that type of programming where everything's kind of getting heavy, right? We're yep. kind of like the advanced novice phase and we are slowly changing into the intermediate. But, you know, people come in with, you know, different personalities to where the type A comes in and they're just like, fuck it, let's do it. Type B is, I, I can't get underneath this bar. You know, I've been thinking about this uh, since last time I left, right? And for mm -hmm. those people, they always go to, I, I would think we just need to go down and work on technique. Yeah. And that's so where, like if, if, so go ahead, Jay. Sorry. Well, that's where I, you know, I have to come in and, you know, maybe address the program and tell them what I'm going to do. But at the same time, um, yeah, re reemphasize the goals. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, this is this is just part of the process. You got mm -hmm. the Ronnie Coleman quote. Everyone wants to look like a bodybuilder. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to lift any heavy ass weights. Um, so it's one of those things where, you know, I see this mostly with like the deadlift, you know, like the deadlift starts getting up to the high threes. And then people start getting super spooked about back extension. They're like, my back wasn't perfectly rod straight. I can't, I cannot progress anymore. You know, mm -hmm. um, I need to go back down to 225 to make sure I know how to do it. It's like, trust me, you know how to do it. That's just what it looks like when it's heavy. You'll be yeah. okay. You know? 
Um, see that with the deadlift super often. The bench press and the the, the overhead press, they're, they're a little bit too technical where it's like, this doesn't happen. You know, like the, the bar path is so finicky um, that it's not like there's any sort of failure point, like a back extension where people can look at it and say that it's a little risque, you know. Um, mm-hmm. No one's just like, oh, I see my pecs quivering a little bit too much on the bench. I can't, I need to work on technique. Yeah. Um, but that happens a lot in the squats and the deadlift just because it's just super high absolute load. Um, so like if you're going through your year and you're noticing that that happens, you're like, you know what? I've taken like five resets. I've taken three resets already. Cause I'm, I'm, I don't want to go up and wait anymore. Um, I don't want to go up in reps. I don't want to go up in sets. I don't want to do anything. I need to work on technique. Mm-hmm. You got to cut that stuff out. Um, we'll talk about kind of addressing that afterwards, but the next guy, I think it's the people who are afraid to gain absolute body size. Um, they're like, Oh, I need to cut before I bulk. I need to, I need to see my abs before I start bulk. Um, you see this a lot with younger guys, Chase. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, actually, um, here recently, man, it's a lot of our people from the gym is doing this because we just had a DEXA scan. So everyone's freaking about, oh, um, yeah. oh man, yeah, I have all this, um, you know, visceral fat. I have all this, uh-huh. you know, look at my lean body mass. It really didn't go up. And we're like, look, one, you haven't been listening to us. Two, you <laughs> thought that you could just eat anything after your workout. Yeah. No, man, like you're 40 uh-huh. something years old. Like yeah. that, that window has closed and shut years ago. So you need mm-hmm. to listen to us. Um, but we can at that, just kind of depending on the person, right? We're not going to drop weight for them um, for you just to cut and, and, and get shredded. It doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the people who are, I, I think Santana has some good articles on this. I'm sure ripped us too. I think one that I just found from the archives recently, it was like, maybe gaining weight is a good idea. You know, like mm. if you are a very skinny guy with not a lot of muscle, but you have some fat, when you take that fat off, you will just now be a skinny guy with less fat, you know, yep. like get some muscle on you, figure it out afterwards. Um, so a lot of times what happens is that people will notice that their lifts will flourish whenever they're bulking and then kind of stagnate whenever they're cutting. And that's definitely a programming issue. Um, but if they look back on their last year of training, they'll be like, man, I just kind of feel like I plateaued on everything. I just kind of haven't really moved either forward or backwards but you've been super obsessed about body fat the entire time. That's Mm -hmm. probably you, you know? Um, So all these personality ones, like they're kind of self accounting things, you know, sit down with your loved one at a dinner table and be like, is, is is this a problem that I have? And they'll be like, they'll say it immediately. They'll be like, yeah, of course, where the hell have you been? You know? Yeah. Um, They'll be like, yeah, that's, that's an incredibly obvious thing to everyone else, but you. Um, yeah. So the, the third one, I run into this one a lot because I tend to give people a lot of work, especially things like chin ups, like Chase was talking about. Um, I just don't feel like doing this much weight or this much reps. You know, you'll call to say, all right, there's 275 on the bar today. And they'll put, I only put 255 on, you know, or it's like, hey, I need you to do four sets of chin ups after your workout. And they'll be like, I did one set and I called it a day. Um, Chase, is this one, is this one pretty common? Uh, no, because we are right. Uh, with the climate of all times. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, you can't bitch out, right? You mm-hmm. are, we're doing this. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're in it. That's one of the blessings. That's one of the yeah. really good parts about like in person, the franchise gyms. It's cause it's like you have a, you have a community of everyone who is very like-minded with their goals. They're going to blast through all that stuff together. Um, but this is really common. I would say in the template world, whenever I, you know, I tell people and they're like, Oh, I tried this template and this template and this template. It's like, did you actually do it? And they're like, no, it's like, well, okay, well, you know, you need a little more accountability. You need someone who's on you constantly to make sure you're doing your stuff. Um, and then inverse to this, we have someone who always does extra work. I notice this a lot mm-hmm. with young guys, um, like people or people who are just really motivated in general. I think this, I guess older people do this sometimes too, as much as younger guys do. Um, but they'll be like, you know what? I was feeling good. I did an extra few or two or three singles, but I was so tired that I didn't do my working sets, you know, it kind of, kind of combines the two of them. Um, you know, or they're like, oh, I went on a run in the morning and my squats screwed up a little bit. Cause I just wanted to do some extra work. Um, do you run into this one frequently, Chase? Yeah, but it's through a kind of a different avenue. It's uh, okay. yeah, I want to do X after you know this to kind of cut off some body fat. I'm gonna like go. I want to add run. some spin class. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and we see that a lot, and it, it never works out. They come in <laughs> and they're trashed. Um, yeah, every single time. Yeah, it ties into the third one too. Um, you know, or excuse me, the third one, the, uh, the the fifth one. I don't need sleep. This amount of sleep or food, I feel fine. You know, mm-hmm. um, there's a large portion of adults, and I'm, they're definitely almost always parents of people who are like they get four and a half to six hours of sleep a night, um, and they're so used to operating like that that they feel totally fine. 
you know, mm -hmm. um, and then their progress really slows down or they kind of peaked at a certain level of muscularity or strength. And then we kind of do some accounting and then their food may be fine, but they may only get, you know, like five hours of sleep every work night just because they're staying up watching Netflix or something like that. Um, or they don't get the chance to sleep in on the weekends or something like that, or they're just really not eating food. So it kind of goes back to the three questions, kind of rips always right thing. Um, this one I see a lot I, whenever I'm doing consults and I always, I always kind of dig into sleep with them. No one has good sleep hygiene. No. no, no one does. I don't, you know, I got six hours of sleep last night, worked out this morning, it sucked. Um, but this one, I think, you know, whenever you're going through it, I would say this one's the most, the most common, I would say. I think oh, yeah, technique could... is the second most common. Yeah, this one, yeah. I, I feel like it's, it's because you've done it already, right? So I've, I've yeah. already years and years of eating only two meals. Um, yeah, I've been doing this diet where I'm only eating within like a four hour window and then I'm I'm seeing excellent results because, um, you know, basically fasting. Why mm -hmm. do I need to eat more carbs and stuff like that? I've heard that's bad. And yeah. This is where we have to jump through all these loops with people and realize that, look, your level of activity at that point was perfect with this, right? But now that you're increasing your level of activity, your body is now being in more demand of nutrients and recovery. You have to increase that. All right, Chase, you keep talking about that stuff. I'm going to pull some videos up so we can get those going. Um, but yeah, so like whenever you're analyzing these things, it's like once you're, if you, you've been coaching for a while, uh, you'll more often than not be able to spot these things whenever people kind of walk through the door. And I'm sure there's an amount of confirming your own biases here, but that's, that kind of is in all areas of life. Um, but you'll know for some people that it's just like, okay, for that guy who's really, really skinny and he tells you he's like a hard gainer, quote unquote, hard gainer, whatever the hell that means. Um, that guy, you know, he's probably, you know, stand up late playing video games and not really eating that much food. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just as much as like the hyper type a executive is going to come in and he's going to say, you know, well, I normally work about 12 hours a day and I get about four and a half to five hours of sleep a night. It's another problem that you're going to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Um, so like you got to figure out which one of these categories that you tend to fall into, um, and then start making moves in the opposite direction. It's not, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what to do with these things, you know, but if you know that if you're that technique guy, try to avoid that temptation. You know, if you're the mm -hmm. guy who's always adding extra work just try to stick to the program. If you're the person who feels like they can't sleep, make some plans on Sunday starting at one o'clock rather than 10, you know, things like that. Yeah. And it's, we kind of can go back even a step. And if you kind of all just look at the macro, um, a lot of people just don't really analyze what they're doing throughout the day. And um, it's just kind of like this mundane routine of, uh, you know, wake up, do X and then do X after that. And not really taking into mm -hmm. account what's all happening throughout the, the week. Yeah, we don't want you to live on autopilot really ever. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of people do. A mistake. Yeah, um, be very thoughtful, and then you'll you'll come to those conclusions as to what to do pretty immediately. You know, mm -hmm. like we said, like it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure those things out um, in the field of rocket surgery. Um, but you know, everyone has these sorts of trends. Um, and I think one more that we added on there was the guy who thinks technique doesn't really matter. You know, the guy who just wants to rip and tear the weights off the floor. That's another one, but I think that's pretty uncommon nowadays. Um, so we're gonna go through some form checks here in the second half of the show. Um, and then we have some, so like this Leo Sao gentleman, he works out at the disco club, um, the discotheque. Uh, we have three videos from him. So we're gonna say, hey, if, if we were Leo, what would we see in these videos and what would we start to do? So he's squatting. And they look like basketball shoes. I can't. No, those no, are man, those are Romalios. I was about to say, like, I think this. Do they is, have the giant swoosh now on the side? Yeah, this is the fours. Uh, he finally got some shoes. So and he, yeah, he still has the big wizard beard and everything. Oh my man, Leo. Yeah, Leo's a Leo's a long time. We've seen Leo mm. across the years. Okay, so first thing, if I was Leo coaching myself, I would get some safeties. Yeah, I would for too. sure, because mm. these starting to look slow. Now would kind of notice one more. Like, yeah, he's going for one more. Yeah, it is. Very slow. All right. If you were Leo, Chase, how would you address these? So you can definitely feel yourself kind of drifting back and forth. And it may be from the fact that you're, you have new shoes now. Um, so kind of finding that balance is going to be a little bit tricky. So kind of attune to that as you're warming up to your work set and making sure that you're keeping the bar over the middle of the foot as best as possible. And you can tell if it's in balance with the midfoot because of the bar speed, right? You notice how some of them move a little bit quicker and some of them don't. Um, a lot of it is because you're getting on your toes and you're wanting to crank your chest up. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, the, so I would say a lot of this is coming from like um, disturbances in back extension. It's just not very consistent. So like what we were saying with like novice versus intermediate in some classifications, making the same error versus making different errors with that lift being consistent, definable, repeatable. Um, so in this situation, like your back is kind of in a different spot every single time. Sometimes you're pitching your chest really far down. Sometimes you're losing the lower back immediately. Um, I would keep most of your brain in is squeezing your chest up, you know, really showing off your sternum and your pecs. Um, try and keep back extension the best you can. And then things will probably get more consistent consistent, you know, um, the, your trunk has a lot of weight into it. So if it's wobbling around, the squat's not going to be too, too great. Um, but I'd get some safeties. And then if you were to say another way, it's like in terms of body weight and muscularity, do you think this is one of the, uh, the shredded guys? Do you think he's trying to stay at this low of a body weight? Where would you go from here, Chase? I don't know. Um, from the videos past, he's been growing, looks, right? Yeah. He kind of seems like he's been getting a little bit bigger, but, um, I think, still you can do a little bit better with it now we're gonna go picture in picture here okay we have other leo videos here we'll go leo this time now hopefully we get to see the beard in all its glory oh my man he's the best oh we got a clean yeah we got a clean it must be hard cleaning with a beard like this leo i'm gonna be honest <laughs> that thing just slamming into the beard <laughs> props to you on that one mm -hmm. yeah now the okay. clean can be a real troublesome thing to kind of coach on your own, right? Because uh, yeah. it happens so damn fast. Um, mm -hmm. if, what I kind of like to do is as I warm up, kind of just break up the, the clean or the snatch um, in different parts, right? Do a few hang cleans to make sure that your rack is all right. Um, mm -hmm. Making sure that you're actually jumping and then slowly lowering it down, making sure that the bar is staying over the midfoot, your knees are not getting in the way of the bar path, um, stuff like that. I think this one you're really concerned about the stomp. So, so if everyone mm -hmm. watching this, like if you you can't hear this, I can hear this on my end. Um, well, I guess we'll try and fix that for the future. Um, but if you'll notice it, he's he's split stepping, which is good. He's increased can doing a lateral step. He's moving both of his feet out, but he's also slamming those guys in there. Um, that's good and well, but he's not actually finishing his jump. So you know, mm -hmm. Leo's kind of ending his pull early. And for people who end their pull early, you'll notice kind of the the grip position, like switching into the front rack. It's always a little bit awkward, you know. Um, so I would tell you, Leo. Uh, uh, or if I was you working on all of this, I would say something's weird going on with my feet. What I'm probably going to do is try to finish my pull. You know, I would say finish the pull, um, keep throwing everything up as high as you can, keep him jumping higher. And it's interesting. It seems like he has some converse on here. Um, I would try the Romelios on for this. Mm -hmm. Definitely try the lifting shoes for this one. Um, and I think weight wise, he has 115 on the bar. Do you think this is an okay practice weight for him? Um, what we've seen with the, the power clean and the snatch is that, um, it changes basically every time you add weight, right? It's a different mm -hmm. movement. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this one, all in all, this really isn't bad. It's just small yeah. little things that we have to tweak. But as you get further, a lot of these non-repeatable movements are going to happen even worse. Um, so you're going to have to kind of pay attention to that. Yeah. And, sure. you know, if you go too heavy and you'll notice instantly that a lot of shit starts breaking down, right? Your form <laughs> will start to just go out the window and, you, you know, you have to take some weight down. But yeah, the you weight right now is fine. Out the problems, yeah. So like a heavier weight, a lot of times, like if I ever get someone a person and they just want to like a technique brush up, it's like, hey, we're gonna go until something breaks. You know, we're gonna we're gonna push you until errors start happening. I don't mm -hmm. want to just gonna have a kind of easy set of three or kind of easy double or something like that. We're gonna make it real hard on you so that you can sort of figure out where the errors are. Um, but I'd say Leo for this guy, you know, finish your pull and that will be most of the problems done and set. And then we have him deadlifting here. It seems like he's deadlifting. 275, 295, I think. If that's a 25 and a 10 on the bar. And he has the Romelios on. Hmm. So maybe these videos from Leo are just from different periods of time. Okay, so we saw three reps so far. Popped on the toes a little bit. Okay. And yeah, we kind of talked touched about this earlier. Um, what everyone kind of feels instantly from a deadlift is the back position, right? And you can kind of yeah. feel Leo that it's starting to kind of give way a little bit. Um, you know, and there's several factors that are attributing to this, right? You're, you're moving around in your stance. Um, nothing's over the midfoot. But if you kind of focus on just squeezing the hell of your back, a lot of this will, will help ease it out.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like if uh, if you're a lifter who's not like watching a ton of other things like this, you know, like the things you can look at or try to piece out or what looks different from rep to rep. Why does rep mm -hmm. one look different than rep five? Um, the speed of which is almost very like the, the 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 pacing in between reps is very similar. The bar speed slows down a little bit, but the back position changes a good bit. You know, it starts to get more and more rounded over time. So you're trying to set your back, but you're giving yourself the same window of time each time. So what you can try is between reps three, four and five, giving yourself an extra second. Right. So if it takes one second squeeze your back into extension on the first rep it may take you know two and a half seconds on rep four it may take three seconds on rep five you know not a super unrealistic expectation there um where everything's harder you're more tired now you need to pay all those things a little bit more attention so it's okay to slow down that pacing in between reps um but otherwise like chase was saying i thought these were that these were really solid overall things right on midfoot um parting advice for our boy leo um, just get more comfortable with pulling in the shoes. I yeah. think you need to stop wearing those um, flat vans or chucks mm -hmm. and just get used to pulling in deadlifting shoes. They'll really help with that jump, man. Shoes. They'll really help yeah. with the jump. Yeah. So just think about jumping through your toes um, as you're as you're flying off the ground. But like someone, let's say he's cleaning, he's, he has two ninety five in the bar here. Um, do you think he should be cleaning one fifteen? Do you think he can probably get that guy yeah. up? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, he probably can go a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. the problem again, what you stated earlier is just how you're catching it, right? That's another, um, example of what you can feel and notice if you're hitting yourself in the, in the collarbone every time and in the low sternum somewhere around there, just how much you're moving your elbows after your feet have landed. Then yeah. you know, you have to take that into account and make sure that you're not surpassing, um, that much weight. Yeah, exactly right. So we have um, we have another kind of series here from Written. Written Written has showed up on the show before, and um, this time we have some more videos from him. He's a he's a nice young man, um, and then he seems like he's going to be doing some pressing. Um, so Written's issues in the past have been that every rep looks different and things aren't very repeatable. Okay, so we'll see if that trend follows for this one. So he's doing a press with what seems to be sixty five pounds, or it could be some fives on the other side. So it could be sixty five to seventy five pounds. He's clearly looking in a mirror, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we got the last rep going on here. Boop. Okay. So first thing, what do you want to change on these ones? I know um, what I want to change. Solidifying an eye gaze and um, man just... I think what's going through his mind is that it's just getting heavier and heavier each time, right? You're not really focusing on one solid cue. Um, you're just doing it, right? Yeah. And He's that's focusing the on the heavy, is. not the movement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he needs to have one solid cue that he works on, you know, each set. It may change set to set as he gets more comfortable with the cue, but this one is just head movement, right? Don't move his head. It's It's just hips. Yeah, you're like a rigid you when you're strict pressing like this, you want to be like a rigid pillar of pressing designed solely mm -hmm. to push things over your head. Like you don't want any of that extra movement, no looking around. Um, no one's looking at you, so you know you just do your thing. Um, but I think a lot of this is coming from the grip. Like if we just pause it here and then look at his grip position, his forearms are tilted in, you know, um, and then the bar is seated a little bit high in his hand. It should be about there, and he should have some more internal rotation of his hands. Um, written for watching this, my man, uh, I want you to look up Phil Meggers nailing the grip position in the press. Um, or just, you know, press wrist position, starting strength. You'll see a bunch of videos for it, but Phil has a good one up there. But how to take that grip. So right now you're too wide. And then if we look at some of the later reps, you know, we'll just we'll just fast forward one of these. The thing's way behind you and your, your wrists are totally bent backwards, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like the bar is now even farther behind your shoulder because you've now collapsed at the wrist. Um, so fix the wrist position, fix your rack position, and then the head movement, all that stuff is going to be a little bit easier. Um, the worse you are at the lift, technically, the less efficient you are, the more that sensation of heavy is going to come through. Um, if you had to, do you, do you think written, um, falls into one of our kind of personality archetypes that we were looking at before or the common trends that we see? I, if I had to bet, he's not eating enough. I'll, I'll put that for damn sure. Definitely. Yeah. The recovery yeah. issues. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. he's, he's really skinny man. Um, but I think he's probably going to be in the one who kind of runs into a wall um, where he just thinks that maybe working on technique is where he needs to be instead of just not worrying about it and just adding more weight to himself. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm, I think on the deadlift, this deadlift looks pretty solid after we, we touched the deadlift the first time. But like with that press, for example, you could be gaining three pounds a week and it could be, you know, 
two pounds of that can be muscle. Um, I don't think that that press would move very much up in weight um, with technique like that, you know? So like with that one, for example, with that press, it wasn't consistent. It wasn't repeatable. It wasn't really definable. Everything was kind of all over the place. You barely at lockout every time. Um, with that one, I would say 100% te uh, technique. With this deadlift, for example, this looks, this looks serviceable, right? This looks pretty decent. You think, Chase? Yeah, I mean, there's still some blatant errors that we see. I mean, we just have a little bit more of a refined eye. We're nitpicking. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But written, yeah. like, what you could probably focus on this is, I'm sure you've heard that, you know, through Ripito or just anywhere on starting strength, that a deadlift needs to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. In this position, like, you're able to hang on to it until you push, right? And then you make, like, this weird strenuous <laughs> You're winston, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're kind of just able to sit down in that position. In a proper deadlift setup, you're not able to do that, right? Like, you're... Your hips are way up high, your hamstrings are barking at you, and your back is ready to extend and push the floor. Mm -hmm. um, I think once you kind of understand that this does need to be uncomfortable, you'll kind of notice uh, the, the lift will be a little bit easier. Yeah, shove the hips and the shoulders up together at the same time. If you can see my mm -hmm. hands, like I'm trying to shove my butt up in the air and my shoulder simultaneously in the bar will move off the ground with you. Um, you know, uh, you'll hear the one where it's like either the setup can feel bad or the pull can feel bad. You want the setup to feel bad, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you want to have to squeeze into that setup like your life depended on it. And then guess what? The pull is going to feel really consistent. Um, but like technically here, I would say, you know, stop looking around so much. Stop making the face. Pull your stance in a little bit. And then that will probably mm -hmm. help too. Um, but technically, otherwise, you know, you're off to you're off to the, off to the races here. These look these look uh, serviceable. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, we'll and, off. You know, and I, I tell people this who kind of. Um, or kind of, you know, they ask me questions about certain people doing certain exercises, how they don't really adhere to what we say the model should be. Um, doing this wrong, a lot of people have gotten strong, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. hell, you've seen it where you can go into like a global gym and like the guy behind you on the little high squat machine, like he's doing shit wrong. But if we were to make him go underneath a barbell, I'm sure he'd be kind of remotely strong if we add five pounds every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're doing something, it's kind of like we were talking about the criteria, you know, for, for really a lift, it's just like the, the hacks, uh, not the hack, I say that, um, but a lift being consistent, definable, repeatable. If it's hitting those benchmarks, you will very, you'll, you'll likely be able to get stronger at it given enough time and enough effort, you know? Um, but like with that press, for example, earlier, that was a little bit too all over the place. Written can probably mm -hmm. grind his head against that one and not get to 95 pounds. That's when those technique things come in here. Um, so what I would say, whenever you're looking at your grip here, Written, you are very loose in the upper back, right? So you're trying to jam yourself in that position. But what you can do is just move your hands in. You know, If you're able to shove yourself well past the bar that easily, you're a little bit too, a little bit too wide in the hands. Um, how do you feel about the stance here, Chase? It's way too wide. Um, way too wide. Yep. Mm -hmm. And... I'm sure you can feel that too, where you feel this premature stretch before you've actually hit depth. And um, that should be an indicator of you're not um, in the proper stance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, he's clearly getting to depth here. I, I bet the house on the fact that he's getting to depth, but the upper back position, the bar is a little bit too low. Your upper back's too loose. Um, I would pull the stance in. So like, if you go through and watch starting strength videos, they'll say, just put your heels basically under or right outside your shoulders. Your shoulders aren't that wide. Maybe they will be one day, but don't start there. That's for sure. Um, pull the stance in, and then everything will probably start to feel a little more organic, um, and then they'll be a little more consistent as well because these are these are relatively inconsistent in how you're standing up, right? Even if you're leaning mm -hmm. with the chest, you're leaning with the hips, you need to make sure that you're doing something similar each time. These look a little bit too different for my taste. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it's just stemming from the, the bar position. The right position, yeah, it's killing you. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. it's going down because you're on your toes, you're on your heels, you're shifting as you come up. Um, if you were to able to actually hang on to it with your back and not just jacking up your elbows to solidify the bar position, yep. um, this would clean up a lot of it. Yeah. Um, and we have a PT Jez here. Let's see what his lifts are. Okay. We got another squat going on and some fuel. My man, my man's on the liquid only diet for this one. <laughs> okay. We have 185 on the bar here. He's getting depth. Hips are coming up first. How do you feel about this bar upper back position, Chase? It seems to be in the right spot, maybe a tiny bit high, just due to how yeah. his elbows are kind of cranking up. Um, see if you can't put it a little bit lower and then maybe scooch in the grip just a tad. But, I mean, you clearly are able to hang on to it. Um, overall, like a lot of these reps look very repeatable, very similar. Um, I, from what we see, though, there, we can do a, things a little bit more beneficial, like you know, mm -hmm. sit back into the bottom, load the hips. Um, but 
overall kind of judging this, um, you're, you're at this point you need to focus on one cue instead of just how the sensation of the squat feels. Yeah. Um, shoving out the knees, you know, sitting back is probably what you're going to have to really focus on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're getting very deep on these and you're, it looks like everything's kind of falling forward. Like on the ascent, it seems like you're getting a little bit forward of midfoot. Um, that's the part that we really want to focus on, like understanding the master cue. Excellent article. If you just look up master cue starting strength, you'll find it. Um, but they'll go over why all these things are really important in there. We want everything railed over right of the middle of your foot. So in this one, you're falling forward of the midfoot, which is really what we don't want in this situation. Um, so like Chase was saying, we want to load the hips a little bit more. So send your butt backwards more reliably and then things should, things should feel a little bit better. Um, but if I were you, if I was in the PT Jez, uh, if I was wearing your shoes, man, I wouldn't be super stressed about your squat. You know, just keep adding weight, I suppose, drink more fuel, um, and mm -hmm. then things should start working out for you. And then we have one more video from him, and we'll see if the lifts of the same quality. We'll see which lift this is. Oh, this is the squat from the other angle. Okay, this will be this will be pretty informative then. Okay, here's the unrack process. Looking at it, this bar position. How do you feel about this now? His head's all the way up here, bar's all the way back there. What do you think? Yeah, still a little bit lower. Yeah. Like, but not much, just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd still like to see you kind of bring in your grip because I'm you went underneath that bar pretty easily. Yeah. Um, it needs to be a little bit of resistance, kind of making it mash into position. The grip can definitely come in. And in this one, yeah. you know, we can actually see the heels lift up a little bit more and we can see the position of the knees. Um, but this confirms the suspicion that you're falling forward a midfoot on the way up. Like if you had mm -hmm. like that last rep, especially I'll play this just this last rep. So it's going down. If you just look at the tip of the barbell. Already. Yeah, bottom, he's and it's going to whoop all the way irks me the loading the toes yeah so he's flipping forward in these so now that we saw the second angle that's great pt jez that's a good thing with coaching yourself is to take multiple filming angles uh, but you can see that you're getting forward in the midfoot a good bit of the time right so if we want to correct around that where do we need to go behind the midfoot so think about sending your butt backwards all the way to the back of the squat rack and that should clean up for sure any parting shots chase for this guy no um probably just you brought up a good point with the camera angle make sure that you're filming yourself after each set, just end at a different angle uh, if you can. Yeah, for Make sure. sure that, you know, everything that you see is present um, if you can see. Um, and, and just not relying on one fixed position that, you know, like written, the one where he had his squat, it was a terrible angle. But we were able to see enough to where uh, we can kind of work around it. But a guy like written, you're not going to see All shit. Right, something's good all right so the mjd cc video uh vlc media player does not like that one so we're going to switch to a different one um we'll go to uh d reynolds here we'll see how this one goes okay Oh man, there are more reps to this set. That is not a single. I really thought this was, yeah, I thought it was. Hell yeah, man. There we go. Um, so for people who are looking at his wrists and they're not familiar with these, these are figure eight straps. They're, they're, they're great. They're wonderful. They can really lock it into your high hand rather than low fingers. Um, figure eight straps are pretty great. So our boy has what, 505 on the bar here? Mm -hmm. Hit this for some decent reps. How do you feel about these, Chase? We'll start this one over again. These aren't bad. Um, just kind of get more of the upper back involved in this, kind of show off your chest a little bit more. But you can kind of tell that um, D. Reynolds here is a guy who's pretty advanced, right, um, and that he doesn't really have to worry on technique because these all look normally the same. And you can kind of see that he's kind of, similar. Yeah, he, yeah, he's kind of jumping around and, like, you kind of see some twitching happen. That just happens with some people. Um, yeah. But, he, you know, if you wanted to progress this further – He'd have to look more towards the programming element of this and not necessarily technique. Yeah, really good example. So it's so like Rip always says it's another funny one. He's like, if you can pull 500, you you can have an opinion then. You know, it's like you, yeah. you've done the requisite work to start kind of knowing what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And you can start to really kind of tease those things out. Um, so he's pulling five uh, over 500 for four. It's a, it's clearly a strong deadlift. He's a big boy. Um, I think the interesting thing is the difference in bar speed between rep one and rep two, you know? Yeah. Um, so like I notice a lot of my, you know, let's say like slower twitch, you know, kind of more endurancey athletes that happens to them a lot. You know, I don't think that's really you. So it may be worthwhile investigating. Um, why rep two is that much faster than rep one, you know? So like if you have a different model of what's going on in the reps between the first and the second, 
that may be it. You know, if you're thinking of a different cue, if you're balanced mm-hmm. a little bit different in the middle of your foot. Um, I thought the first rep was a little bit on your heels, especially with the way it finished. Rep two wasn't really on the heels, you know, so that could be it. Um, it's all these tiny things when you're at this stage of the game. Um, yeah, rep two wasn't on the heels at all. I think that was the difference between the first one and the second one. Um, yeah. Thinking about where the balance is, and then you should be able to pump out a lot more reps in this one. But these are these are great, man. D. Reynolds, coming in strong. Any parting shots for him? No. And then um, kind of like that opinion of shoe wearing, right? Like you're at a level to where you can wear whatever the fuck you want to. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, still, I, I still advocate for weightlifting shoes, man. That's going to help mm. you kind of get off your heels and stuff. But um, All right, man. I'll let you choose. We have hard gains. We have JP29 snook. Kyle502216. I like JP snook. I like this snook. All right, JP game. snook. All right. Yeah, that's a pretty good name, man. All right, he's in, the, he's in the garage. We got 225 in the bar. Oh, he's pumping out these fast. Okay, how'd you feel about these, Chase? Yeah, I, just, I don't know why the fuck you're in such a hurry, man. <laughs> What's um, the rush? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What are you doing a wide? Um, yeah. Just slow these down. Um, these really look pretty good, though, overall. Uh, you kind of raise your chest up on a few of those, like that mm-hmm. one. Um, yeah, but rep four is really chesty. Yeah, four too, yep. If, if you slow these down, kind of give your time to think about what's happening in the movement, Yeah, um, it's going to help allow you to uh, squat more effectively. Yeah, yeah, Jay. Um, so, like, if you if you want to think about it, like, if I have, if, let's say, if someone were to give you 10 minutes to do 20 push-ups, it really wouldn't be that hard. Um, but if I were to give you 30 seconds to do 20 push-ups, it would be quite hard. And if I could already do 15 seconds to do that same amount of push-ups, it would be incredibly hard, you know. Um, so with the squat, for example, like they're not charging you per minute that you have the bar out, you know. Yeah. Um, at least hopefully that will never happen and we're a dystopian future. Um, it's like you have the time, okay. So let's say if you're squatting 225 for five, um, if you do that across 30 seconds, it's going to be almost identical stimulus to if you do that in, mm-hmm. you know, how long was this video, you know, 20 seconds of the period of time that you're doing your squat for. Um, so like there's really no rush you're practicing for when there's four or five on the bar. And then if there's four or five in the bar, you're not going to take it out that lackadaisically. You're going to get your whole brace going, take a big breath in, just like you did for rep one, lock that shit in and then do every rep and treat it with a hundred percent seriousness. Mm-hmm. You're not just going to pop in and out. Um, so that's the thing. Like, even if it's lightweight, you got to take it seriously. Um, but technically, I think these are pretty solid. You're you're right at depth. I don't think you're really below depth. I think the toe angle may be a little bit too severe. Um, and like Chase was saying, you're leading with a chest on these guys. So I would like to see a little more hips coming out of the bottom. Um, but uh, so any other advice? If you were if you were Jay, what would you be doing, Chase? More chin ups, less chin ups? Uh, no, man. Just <laughs> allowing, kind of going into the squat with an idea, right? Yeah. I think here you just kind of rush into it. Um, didn't really plan on anything. It's just, oh, I got five. Let's just crank them out. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we need to take our time with these things. Because, mm-hmm. um, again, like, that's a, it's something hard that's a little bit hard for, for novice lifters to conceptualize um, is that, you know, what you're doing right now, you're, you're practicing. That's really mm-hmm. what you're doing. Um, so like Chase can attest to this with his recent Olympic lifting, you know, like it's a, it's a long technical journey. And if you kind of skip the beginning part of it, and I'll notice this a lot with the clean, like they'll just have some guys who they can, you know, they can deadlift 500 pounds. They'll be like, whatever, I don't really need to pay attention to my clean. And then they'll want to get into it later. And then they'll hit those technical walls because, you know, for the first two years of their lifting career, whenever they were doing a clean, they weren't really paying attention to it. Yep. Um, and now they're kind of at this skill deficit. Um, any other, any else you want to talk about Chase? Um, I can't think of any. Um, okay. No? That's it. The beard is coming along pretty nicely, right? When is oh, that going to, how long is that going to go on for, man? Please no, cut that thing no. off. I just need, I just want to hang on to this, like the little goatee thing. You do the, the goatee for the seminar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Goats for the seminar. Yeah. That'll be good for everybody in Texas. They'll just see you in like multiple month intervals. So it'll just get longer and longer each time. Mm-hmm. Mm, I got to shave this for off my face. It looks disgusting. Um, but Chase, we can find you at Chase, uh, Chase Lindley on Instagram. Well, on Instagram. Yep. And then um, if you're in the OKC area, Come by to Starting Strength, Oklahoma City. Uh, just Google it. I forgot our address. I think it's like 
12, 301 Southwestern Ave. Yeah, uh, something like that. Rip did the same thing. It's like, we don't care about the address. It's the future. No one needs the address. You know, I mm. asked him, I was like, where can I get good barbecue? I'm in, you know, I'm in Texas. My flight's tomorrow. I, it was on Monday for the seminar. And then he was telling me about Leaper's Creek, just this little barbecue. I'm sure you've been there, Chase? No, I've never okay. heard of it. But it was Where's this it little at? it's this little barbecue place off the highway before as you're driving back to to Dallas, I think, to go to the airport. Um because I flew it's in the Dallas, it's not in it's, it's on the public. highway on the way there. Uh, so like I drove for an hour out of the way for like 30 minutes and then I got to it. But he was like trying to explain to me for five minutes like the literal directions. He was like, You take this road and then this road, and then you're gonna see a big tree, and then you go left at the tree. You take the left there and not the right. Um, and he was just going on with the directions. And then Nick had to come off. He was like, dude, we, he'll just look it up. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I was, I, I was, I was, I was enthralled with the directions. I haven't, I don't, I don't have that skill. <laughs> that's a skill that's lost to time is yeah. the ability to give directions like that. Yeah. I don't have any identifiable trees on my trip to and from the house. I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Chase, it was a pleasure. What do you think you want to do next for, for next episode, man? I don't know. Um, if you guys have something that y'all think we should cover, um, just let us know. But for yeah. right now, I don't know. We'll have to mm -hmm. kind of brainstorm. Yeah, one of my boys from Canada, uh, a boxer, he he, uh, he had a good suggestion. It was like how to plan a year. So it, it was about macro level planning. It was like how to plan, like if I'm lifting for a year, what should my expectations be? How can I kind of plan my, you know, phasic training or if I'm going to periodize at all? That was one of his ideas. And then also kind of like how to plan your weekly training around activities, you know? So like, let's say for example, like, Oh, I have a busy Saturday. I have these activities yeah, that I have one. to do. Yeah. And then how exactly should I kind of modulate or push training around? What that? The we may do that one. And stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How to work, how to work through that stuff. So that that's may be nice. it. So thanks Brent, if you're watching this one. Um, but that's it for today, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. See y'all. Bye.